Bhagavatu Sahanao Bhunaktu Sahavirya Karavavahai Pejas Vinavadhi Tamastu Mavid Vishadahai Aum Shanti 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 Namaste. So I guess a lot of people got faked out by the change in the name of the channel, the rebranding of the channel to focus on Vedanta and Upanishads. So I guess they'll find it again eventually if they have any interest in these subjects. Speaking of which, I want to tell you about an experience I had this morning. I usually get up very early in the morning, about 2 o'clock, 2.30. 3 is late, you know. <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly what time it is, probably around 2. I woke up and I love to meditate just in the uh, Sandhya, the interface between sleeping and waking. Because in that state, it's very easy to contact Turiya and Brahman. So before I, you know, come out of sleep and into my body and start doing things, I just lie there for a long time and stay inside not dreaming, not allowing the mind to wander, or getting involved in all the stories that it comes up with, but just silently contemplating consciousness. So I did that this morning, and as usual in my meditations, the bright light of Brahman shines out, and it's a very beautiful thing. It's as if dozens or hundreds of suns rose up in the sky all at once. It's so brilliant. Thousands of points of light, all shining with the spiritual effulgence of Brahman. The sun is simply a reflection of that. So I like to dive into that and enjoy that beautiful presence. And this morning, the way the light came to me, it was as if there was a door opening on the right side. And the, this brilliant light cascading through this door. And so, I went through the door, and as I went through the door, I realized this is the door of death. Why is it the door of death? Because it means the end of the ego, the end of the mind, the end of the body, the end of karma, the end of everything that makes us a separate individual, desires and so forth. And the full uh, fulfillment of being in Brahman is all that's left. So this is available to everybody. This peace, this, this great release. But so few people bother to find it, to experience it, to take advantage of it, because it gives relief from all kinds of suffering. So the means to attain Brahman 
are given in the Upanishads. And this experience this morning reminded me of the Kata Upanishad, which contains a story about Nachiketa and death. But before I get into the story, I want to talk about the meaning of Upanishad. According to Shankaracharya, the main root is Sad, Upanishad. Huh? And Upa and Ni mean, Upa means near, and Ni means with certainty. So, Shad means to, to destroy or to go, to break up or, or cut to pieces something, or to go to another place. So, the real meaning of Upanishad, or the secret esoteric meaning of Upanishad, is that knowledge which cuts to pieces or destroys the nescience that separates us from our true self, which is nothing but Brahman. And also the knowledge that gives us the ability to go, well, even though there's no place to go, <laughs> but to transform ourselves into knowers of Brahman. And so it's said later on in the Kata Upanishad, knowing that one becomes freed from the jaws of death. And we'll see in the story how Nachiketa actually uh, transforms death from something destructive to something liberating. The story is Nachiketa's father was performing a sacrifice. And in this sacrifice, he was supposed to give away all his possessions and then take sannyas. So Nachiketa noticed that the cows that he was giving to the brahmanas were all old and dried up and basically useless. And he was struck by this and realized that if his father only gives useless animals in the sacrifice, he won't get the result that he's aiming for. He won't get freedom from his karma. He won't be able to leave his household life and so on. So Nachiketas uh, came to his father and said, now you're giving away everything that's yours. I am also yours. So to whom are you going to give me? Because he felt that he was a better gift. He was more, more valuable, more useful than these old useless cows. But Nachiketa's father became angry and upset. And he said, I'll give you to death. So Nachiketa said, all right, okay. And the next thing we know, Nachiketa is in the house of death. It doesn't say how he got there, whether by his own will or, you know, it's not stated. That detail is left out. But anyway, he's in the house of death. But death was out. Yamaraj. I guess he was, you know, harvesting souls. <laughs> Busy, you know, as usual. And uh, he must be working overtime in Ukraine right now. Uh, so anyway, death was out. And for three days, Nachiketa waited without food or water or rest. And then when death came home, his wives told him, hey, there's a Brahmana boy waiting for, to, to see you. And he's had nothing to eat or drink or rest for three days. You should do something, you know, give him some boons or something to make it up. 
because the brahmanas, and especially an uninvited guest of brahmana, is considered to be as good as God. And one should serve them very nicely. So death approached Nachiketa and apologized. He said, I'm very sorry you had to endure such inconvenience because of me, my neglect. So I offer you, since you were here three days, I offer you three boons, three blessings. You pick whatever you like. So Nachiketa said immediately, first boon is let me be reconciled with my father. Let him understand my action and appreciate my intention to protect him and the results of his sacrifice. So death said, okay, granted, you got it. Then Nachiketa said, for my second boon, I want to understand the sacrificial fire and how the sacrificial fire removes all the obstacles to salvation, beginning with attaining the heavenly worlds and all the way up to full liberation. So Yama said, okay, that's fine. And he instructed Nachiketas in this art and science of the fire ceremony. So we won't go into detail on that. But then Nachiketa asked for his third boon. He said, reveal to me what is beyond death. In other words, what is beyond samsara, the round of birth and death? or in, in plain direct speech, <laughs> show me about liberation. And death said, oh, that's very secret. Even the demigods don't know this. Uh, only I and the Supreme Lord, Vishnu, Narayana, know this, and Shiva. So ask for something else. Ask for anything else. <laughs> And he offered him so many benedictions of wealth and power and fame and unlimited uh, concubines and, you know, so many things, right? But Nachiketa said, these are very nice, but they're temporary. And so Yama said, well, then I grant you long life until the end of the universe, even. The same like the demigods. And Nachiketa said, but what's the use of that if it has to end when the universe ends? No, these are not boons that I would think are acceptable. Uh, I, I'll stick with my story. <laughs> I want to know what is beyond death. What is immortality? What is moksha? What is liberation? So at this, Yama was kind of backed into a corner because he couldn't go back on his promise. So he gave Nachiketa the knowledge that leads to liberation. And as I said, at the end of this section, uh, it said, knowing that, one becomes freed from the jaws of death. So the key to liberation, freedom from death, is knowledge. And that knowledge is given in the Upanishads. Therefore, one should study the Upanishads. And uh, I've put a link in the video description below of this Kata Upanishad so that you can read it and study it and gain these same secrets for yourself. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung.